Welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well and if you're just joining me now then hi my name is Kiva and I do true crime videos. I normally post three times a week but not this week apparently. I just want to say I'm very sorry for not posting much last week. It was my 18th birthday on Thursday when I normally upload and I did try and record a video but kind of wasn't really vibing with it. Then I did record a video for Sunday but again I wasn't vibing with it. Um, yeah, so I decided not to post them because I don't want to be posting stuff that I'm not 100% happy with. So, yeah, I'm coming back though today. I'm an 18 year old gal. I'm elderly now. I'm an elderly woman. And yeah, I've got another true crime case. This one's kind of important. It's important for me to talk about Jane and John Doe's. If you don't know what that is, it's basically someone who has died but their body has never been identified. And I think it's so important to talk about these because these bodies deserve the recognition and they deserve like to have an identity and not just be like some random body in a morgue. So I'm doing a Jane Doe case today and yeah I hope you enjoyed this video if you do give it a thumbs up and I'm just gonna get into it and stop talking. So we're going back quite a while with this case so picture it it's July 31st 1960 so 60 years ago? Oh my god that's long yeah so there's a guy and he's just out his name is russell allen he's a school teacher and he's in arizona and he's just like out with his family and they're looking for rocks for their garden but he finds something that isn't a rock he finds the partially buried body of a child so where he found this body was Sunwash creek bread on old almo road and this is a very kind of busy area. So where we found the body is a very short distance away from the intersection of State Highway 93 and Almo Road. And this is like a very busy area because it's the main route between Phoenix, Arizona, Las Vegas, Nevada. Like so just a very busy area. So obviously Russell contacted the proper authorities and they came out to, you know, collect the body, get evidence, see what happened. And they determined that it seemed like someone had tried to bury the body quite a few times because like... There was a few different areas of disturbances in this kind of like area where the body was. She was in a very shallow grave, this girl was, and they found a rusty blood-stained like knife near the scene, but it couldn't be like identified to the girl or couldn't be like confirmed to be the cause of her death. So she was found wearing some white shorts and a very distinctive checker blouse with like a very striking pattern. Near her body they found a pair of men's rubber sandals, but they were cut down to fit a child, so it's presumed they were hers and there was kind of like a leather strap which was used to keep them on her feet. So her fingernails and toenails were both very well groomed and they were both painted a bright red colour and like it wasn't chipped or anything so obviously it was recent that they were painted. Obviously they tested her body to see how she died but they couldn't really confirm anything because she'd been dead for one to two weeks before her body was found and obviously like in the 60s we didn't have like the technology we do now so they couldn't really work out how she died. All they could work out was that none of her bones were broken and none of them had ever been broken at any point in her life and her body had been set alight as part of it was charred. Now at the time they thought this was the body of a white girl but later on they couldn't really determine the race so we're not really sure what race she was. Her height was between 3 foot 6 inches to 4 foot 5 inches and she weighed between 50 and 60 pounds. She was thought to be between 5 and 7 but later examination kind of extended this to two to nine years old. Like, we honestly have no idea how old this girl was. But the best guesses are three to six. This is what most people believe. Her hair was thought to be brown and it could have been, like, dyed auburn or could have been, like, tinted. We're not really sure. She had a full set of her teeth. They were milky teeth, so, like, baby teeth. And they were fully intact and very good condition like they'd been taken care of and at the time her body was just too decomposed for them to make a composite sketch like, obviously this may have like hindered the investigation because this is the main way people would have like known who this girl was you know if you see a picture of someone that you know on the news as a composite sketch it's easier you know than just kind of vague descriptions of a girl so they looked at everything and marked her death as a homicide because obviously kind of something had happened but they weren't really sure what and police were spreading the word in this local town they just wanted to get this young girl identified because it was heartbreaking law enforcement traveled hundreds of miles just to interview as many people as possible to just try and work out who this poor girl was and the local town that like was near where she was found was so shocked 
and obviously they all wanted to know who she was as well they were doing things on the radio they were honestly doing everything they could they were putting posters up everywhere asking if anyone knew of any missing children they were receiving letters and tips as well about kind of who this girl could be but you know all of these were investigated and none of them could be confirmed to be true they interviewed all known like people who had committed crimes against children in the area but all of them could be ruled out you know they didn't have anything to do with it the next month so this is august 1960 police started to think that she was a little girl called sharon lee sharon lee she was four at the time of her disappearance and she was abducted 10 days before the body was found from New Mexico. She was taken on the 21st of July in an alley near her house by a man and a woman. Now, police were a bit, like, kind of sceptical because the body that was found was wearing different clothes to what Sharon was wearing. But, you know, the kidnappers could have changed the clothes. And as well, they kind of thought that Sharon was a little bit younger than the body found and kind of didn't match the description. Sharon's footprints were compared to the footprints of the body and they were not confirmed, like, it wasn't her. But Sharon is still missing to this day, so you never know. Like, they did actually, like, char her body, you know, it was confirmed that her body was burnt, the girl's body. So, this would obviously affect the footprint. So, it could have been Sharon. We never know, because Sharon still hasn't been found. Police started questioning lots of different migrant families to see if the child belonged to them, if they knew anything about the kid. And they spoke to this one guy, and his name was Lester Davidson. And him and his family were, like, hitchhiking in this area around the time of like the body being discovered but him and the two children of his that were like there they were confirmed to be like clear of it you know they don't have anything to do with it the people of the town did not want her to be another Jane Doe so this local radio presenter he helped raise funds for her funeral and everything to make sure she got a proper send off her funeral took place on the 10th of August 1960 and it was conducted by Dr Charles Franklin Parker it took place at the Congressional Church in Prescott Arizona and I've actually got some like quotes that he said at the service so I'm going to read those out now. Here is a little wanderer who has been in our midst. We don't know her name. We can only guess her age. It occurs to me we may not know but God knows. There are no unknowns, no orphans in God's world. We may never know the whys and wherefores but somewhere someone is going to be watching the penny parts to learn about what happened to a little girl left in the desert. If there has been a misdeed, probably a disquieted conscience will go on and on. And it said he got a bit emotional at the like service because it is sad. It's so sad. Her like memoriam card which was left on her casket read, God's little child, date of birth unknown, date of death unknown. And an anonymous mourner left a note. Lots of people left notes. And this note read, forgive us child for the weakness of men and in turn when in your final home pray for us. Her casket was pale blue and had lots of pink and white carnations on it. And then there were also lots of other flower arrangements at the ceremony and nearby, like, for her. And she was laid to rest at Mountain View Cemetery. Her grave reads, Little Miss Nobody, Blessed are the Pure of Heart, St Matthew 5.8.1960. And this is kind of the nickname that she had by the locals, Little Miss Nobody, and this is what she's still known as, which is so sad. The next thing to happen in this case was in March 1961. So the police thought that it could be a girl called Debbie Dudley who was missing. She was four at the time of her disappearance and police had failed to find her body and some of her siblings, except for Cara Ann whose body was found wrapped in a blanket on the 9th of Feb. Cara Ann died of exposure, malnutrition and neglect from her parents and police really thought this could be Debbie's kind of body, you know, because they didn't know where it was. So it was hopeful, it was really hopeful that this was this girl's body. Sadly her remains were found in West Virginia and she was laid to rest with her sister. Obviously both the parents were charged with their murders because they were neglectful and horrible. And on August 8th, 1961, a camera crew was taken down to like where the body was found and they showed the sandals and they were trying to just jog anyone's memory. And the sheriff said, somewhere there is someone who has the answer that we are looking for. Maybe this will be the thing that brings that person forward, but obviously it wasn't. And this case was pretty much cold for decades and decades. In 2018, the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children funded the excavation of her body, which was like, you know, her body was brought out of the ground to be tested again, because obviously technology has developed so much in this time and they really wanted to just identify this girl and they actually managed to do a composite sketch her DNA profile went onto the national database but again nothing came of it like it had been so long since her body had been found any relative she had probably wouldn't be thinking about her 
So I compared it to other missing people cases, you know, from around that time that hadn't been solved, but nothing came of it. They honestly had nothing. So that's pretty much it, which is so sad. This is still ongoing, police are still looking into it. It is kind of my only thought that she was murdered. But honestly, it's so heartbreaking. I just think someone out there either knew something if they're dead now or they know something if they're still alive. Because this little girl had someone who cared for her, who looked after her. She had her toenails painted. She had like good teeth, which meant that someone out there was looking out for her. The only reason I can think that they wouldn't want to identify her is if the person or people who knew her, they killed her or they know why she was killed and they would get in trouble for it. Which I find so sad. This little girl, she had a family, she had a life, which was taken away from her. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.